welcome to the video. So we're looking at week five. We're almost halfway point for Ironman Panama City Beach. We're in a 12 week prep and everything is going great. Got a little behind on the videos with life, babies being born and grandbabies and just everything. Staying super busy. But I'm able to get my 10 to 12 hours a week in for training. So what I really want to talk about this week, the video is race tactics. I've been hearing a lot about race tactics and typically race tactics for most races start with the swim. So I'm gonna kind of break down race tactics for me and things that I've seen um, I've technically been doing a lot of training, but I've also been doing sprints just to try to acclimate me to the transition and the open water swim. Cause you can't really do a whole lot of race tactics in a swimming pool, but I'll talk about that in a few minutes cause you, you can a little bit. So, uh, I got a storm brewing behind me. So I'm gonna try to make this short and sweet. So race tactics. Week five of the training, almost at the 50% mark with the training, doing really well. I walked through my training today. So training today was uh, basically a seven mile, just super easy pace. It was 105 degrees in the Florida heat. So it was definitely a challenge for the run today. Started out with about an eight minute pace and then averaged out with a 10 minute pace. And one of the miles there, it was so hot, my chest was like throbbing from the heat and sweat was just pouring down. Uh, had a few climbs in there, a few hills. So it definitely was not, wasn't easy. So that dropped me down to the 10 minute pace. Um, but no, it was a good run, uh, seven miles, a little over an hour, check the box. Sunday's my long run. Now those will increase, I'll probably get up to about 12 miles. I don't typically run the 26 miles when I'm doing a Ironman prep for an Ironman. Uh, reason being, I just, the run's hard enough as it is, and it's just something that you gotta push through. So that's what I do. All right, so let's jump on race tactics. They've been talking about this a lot. Any channel that you stream, any YouTube, any podcast, they're going to be wearing you out about race tactics. So I'm like, I'm sick of hearing it. Let me do a video on it for the age groupers, and let's just break it down. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start at transition. Let's start at dropping your bike off. So the race tactic for dropping your bike off is... Typically, where you put it at, where you're told to put it at, and how close to the bike mount line you can get your bike. And the way they have you rack your bike, they have every other. So you have your seat facing this way, and then the guy next to you, his seat is facing this way. So it's like every other, every other, just to get as many bikes as they can in there. Now this last sprint that I did, I was closer to the bike mount line than I was the previous race. That's just the way it works out. I encourage you to scope out your uh, transition area. Just kind of run it through your head. What's going to happen? That's definitely a great race tactic. Then that way you can know where the competition is going to be at and it's good. All right. So we're at the swim start now. Basically what I do, um, they do go in your seated time. And my seated time is about two minutes for 100. So what I do is I get up with the 120 guys because a lot of those 120 guys are gonna be two minutes and you don't wanna be passing them. So get it up close to the front of the race as you can because you're already nervous and you're eager to start it just as quick as you can. So that way you can hit the water when the gun goes off and then get it done. 
then that way your time is more accurate too. So if you start at seven o'clock and you get done at seven o'clock, it's a sub 12 and everything's good. If you start at 7.30 and you get done at 12, I mean, you, get, you start at 7.30 and get done at seven, then it's 11 and a half hours. So it's just, I don't know. I just always thought start when the race starts. In your mind, you can track it better. You don't got to take away 30 minutes or 45 minutes if you did your actual seated time. So moving on, you hit the water. Uh, it's two loops. So my strategy is to get up the, with the front swimmers because they're going to actually pull you. The faster swimmers are going to pull you, and that's great. So you're going to actually draft a little bit. It's not a whole lot. It's only a couple seconds but you can actually save yourself for the bike. Um, me personally, I use a lot of my arm motion, a lot of my arm motion, and that's one of my tactics, and that way I can save my legs for the bike and the run part. Now, you wanna go from buoy to buoy, stay on the inside of the buoy line, and just streamline yourself, because a lot of people are gonna do that, so it's gonna be kinda crowded. Or if you're not good with swimming in crowds, then swim to the outside of the buoy line where the typically the divers are there watching you, the kayakers are there, there'll be people on surfboards. It's very safe, don't panic. So once you get past the wave break, because I'm doing ocean water swim, and then it'll be nice and smooth, be like a lake. And then you're gonna go to the last buoy, and then you're gonna turn, and you're gonna come back. I've not figured out how many meters every buoy is i'm going to so in my mind i can be like okay this buoy's 250 this buoy's 250 this buoy's 250 and then when you get to about 1200 meters then you turn then you got probably a couple hundred meters to swim to the to the to get to come back and you're going to run down the beach as fast as you can jump back in the water they might have water they always recommend to drink the water i do because you had that salt water in your mouth for 35, 40 minutes. And it's definitely, I drank one, poured it over my head, cleaned my eyes up, you know, take my goggles off for a second and just keep it moving as fast as I can. So that's gonna be the race tactic for the swim. Stay up front as best you can and draft off the, the fast swimmers, which is gonna be mostly your pros are gonna be up front and then the age groupers. So you can knock that swim out. All right, so now the race tactic for the swim to the transition to your bike, run as fast as you can. If it's a wet suit swim, they're gonna have strippers. Use the strippers. I know it's gonna be hard to stop, and but they have you lay down and they pull it off. You'd be glad you did. It comes off very quick. Maybe put a little Vaseline around your ankles. That's what I do for the timing chip. Cause the timing chip, it will rub uh, when you start the run and you'll have a little, like a little blister there. So do Vaseline, your wetsuit will come off quick. And then they also say to cut about an inch at the bottom of your wetsuit, just to kind of open up a little bit. So when they strip it off of you, so that way you can get to your bike as fast as you can. Grab your bag, goggles are already off, wetsuits in your arms and then you're gonna pull everything out of your bag, you're gonna be in a room, and then you're gonna stuff everything in your bag, wetsuit, goggles, swim cap, uh, bike shoes are on, helmets on, and then you're gonna go grab your bike and you're gonna run to the bike mount line. Now with the race on the bike, it gets a little tricky because it is a USAT race and they will have people watching you like a hawk. So do not get in trouble for, um, uh, drafting you cannot draft it's a USAT race make sure you're passing properly and you're doing everything correctly because they will pull you over and give you a penalty card and it's one to like five minutes and it can mess up your slot for Kona trust me it's happened if you're like say 12 hours and you're at 1205 because you got a five minute penalty and that five minutes what you need to get your Kona slot for your age group then yeah you'll be very very upset so be very, very careful about drafting. Um, I do it, but just be super, super careful about drafting. 
that is a good race tactic that you can use. Um, I do recommend it. Even if you're like two or three bikes back, you're still getting a little bit of that draft um, and you're not breaking any rules. Um, just watch out for the race officials because you may think you're three bikes back and you may be only two back and then they're going to give you a card. So be super careful with that. But that is a good race tactic, but it can get you in trouble too. So don't, don't draft too close for too long. Um, stay on the white line. Uh, do not cross over the yellow line because they will, they can actually DNF you for that. So do not do that. It has happened to pros. So stay on the white line, stay on the outside and just keep picking off people and just moving up and that's how you get it done. Now, when you get back to the bike mount line, I'm already unclipped. I'm coming in hot. I'm dragging my feet, hitting my brakes to slow down. And then I'm gonna run. I'm gonna mount my bike. I've already got my helmet off. I've, I keep the same sunglasses on. Uh, I'll grab my bag with my run gear in it. And then you'll sit down on the ground and you'll swap out your bike gear for your run gear. Now the run, there's not really any kind of race tax, tactics on the run. The run is what the run is. So basically all you can do is stay on the inside as much as you can and watch your pace. I'm gonna tell you right now, you got bike legs after running off the bike. So you're gonna go in hot. So remember, try to find your pace, try to find your comfort zone. And once you get to the finish line, it's it. Now my race tactic, for the race is six miles down, six miles back, six miles down, six miles back, and then I can hear everything, and then that's the end of the race, and everything is gonna go good. Race tactics are perfect for this line. We love it, and we will see you guys in the next video. We appreciate you watching. Iron Man Prep is going great week five thank you for watching see you in the next video